We learned about how we can support the interface of a priority queue using a singly linked list. And either this list is sorted or not sorted. In the worst case, some of the operations for the priority queue will get to linear time, big of n, which is not very impressive. What we would like to improve is by using an alternative data structure called the heaps. And then by using a heap, we will be able to reduce the running time uh, substantially from linear down to logarithmic. That's something we'd like to learn about. And we want to learn about many aspects about the heap data structure. We'll start by mentioning intuitively what a heap is and also the properties you should really satisfy and also some examples. And then we we'll talk about the different operations you can perform on a heap. And then we're going to learn about how you can actually uh, build a, key, a heap uh, from scratch. So there are two different construction mechanisms we want to learn about. There are many other things we want to learn as well. Anyway, we'll get uh, get uh, get to learn about the heap one uh, one thing at a time. What's really a heap? Number one, a heap is just a binary tree which satisfies some special properties. So don't really get to uh, don't really get uh, lost the big picture. A heap. It's just a fancy name for a special kind of binary tree. Let's see what kind of properties or uh, you have to satisfy for the heap. And uh, it will store each node and entry, in which case we're going to get a key and also value. And the key over here is going to be very similar to the key that we talk about in the entry for a priority queue, we, meaning that the key is not really for searching purpose. It's only for denoting the so-called priority for the tree, the, for the entries that store in the tree. The lower the key value is, the higher the priority it denotes. And this will be one example heap, which I will explain a little bit later. In order for you to judge, given an arbitrary binary tree, how do you know whether or not it's actually a heap? Right, let's not get it clear. A binary tree may not necessarily be a heap, but a heap is always a binary tree. Right? That's kind of the bidirectional relationship you want to understand very clearly in the beginning. There are two properties we want to check against any given binary tree to see whether or not it's actually a heap. The number one is a, a relational property. And the relational property constrains about the key values for every entry that's actually stored in the tree. That's something we'll talk about first. And the second property that a binary tree also must satisfy in order to be a heap is so-called a structural property. And that one there mainly concerned about how we organize the binary tree. So there are two properties over here. One is about the relational property, about the key values. And the second one will be about how the parent child nodes are actually organized together in the tree. Two properties. We're going to talk about one by one. Let's start with the relational property. And the relational property by definition, let's take a look and then we'll do some example. It's called, also called a heap order property, HOP. Sometimes I just sim uh, simply mention the acronym uh, in the slides. Right? So the key values for every entry in the tree must satisfy the so-called heap order property. What is that? Every node other than the root or non-root node is such that the key value for that particular node should be larger than or equal to that uh, then the key of its parents. That's a simple definition. And we want to check this property for every node. You can think about checking this is similar to checking whether or not the tree is balanced. You have to check for every node to see if that's balanced in order for the tree to be uh, to be balanced. And in order to check that your tree is actually a heap, part, part of the condition would be you want to check that every node that's not the root is going to satisfy the heap order property. Right? You can see the analogy over here, right? Let's now take a look. According to the definition, which I already uh, also repeat uh, repeat over here, right? Every non-root node, which means we're going to check for every node except for the root, because the root doesn't have any further parents. Let's say, let's tr uh, start with this. Let's say for this particular node, we want to make sure the key value of that is larger than or equal to the key value for its parents. That's exactly what the definition is uh, requiring us to check, right? So for us, we're going to do for node by node. So five over here, we know that is actually larger than or equal to four, which is the parents. So this one here, check. Good. What about this one here? Six over here is also larger than or equal to the key for its parent. In that case, also check. Right, the order in which you want to check for the nodes for the heap uh, order property doesn't really matter. But let me just check level by level. What about 15 over here? For 15, 
it is larger than or equal to the key for its parents, which is five, right? So that one check. What about nine? For nine over here, its parents got the key value of five, so that's uh that's good. So nine is larger than or equal to five. Also check. What about for this note over here? For seven, its key value larger than or equal to its parents, which is six. Check for this one. What about 20 over here? Also larger than or equal to its parents, six. Also check. So we have checked two levels already. Let's check level three as well. For 16 over here for this note, it's key larger than or equal to the parent key, which is 15, right? So check. I can definitely write this a little bit better. That should be larger than or equal to, right? And what about this one here, 25? larger than or equal to the parent key, which is 15. Check. What about this note over here? 14 is the key value, and then larger than or equal to the key for its parents, which is nine, right? Also check. What about this note over here? 12 over here, larger than or equal to the key value for the parent note, which is nine. Also check, two more. And for this one here, you can see the key value is 11, larger than or equal to the parent key, which is seven, also check. 13, larger than or equal to the key value for its parents, seven, right, also check. You can see this is kind of the process you have to go through thoroughly by yourself, but I just did it just once together with you. Of course, if any note actually has its key value not larger than or equal to the key of its parents, that means we violate the heap order property for one note. In that case, the whole tree cannot be a heap. All right, so that's the relational property. And given this, I would like to point out some lemmas that we can actually draw from the heap order property. And I already outlined the uh, lemmas or properties on the slides. I'm just going to use this example heap to actually show to you. Well, of course, officially speaking, we haven't really declared this tree to be a heap because we are still lacking the check for the uh, structural property, which we're going to talk about. But I can tell you that this is a heap. Ultimately, that's something we will conclude. Right, property number one. Let me write it down. Property number one. If you try to find a leaf to root path, any uh, leaf to root path has a sorted sequence of keys. Right? Let me just show to you. For example, let's say I choose this particular leaf node over here, and then I try to find out its ancestor path all the way to the root. So this, 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 and this. And look at their key values. 14, 9, 5, and 4. That's sorted with the root over here being the minimum. Let's see another one, just to convince. How about this one here? 11, 7, 6, and then 4. That's also sorted. So any leaf to root path has a sorted sequence of keys. Or to, to make it more general, for every node, if you're trying to find out its ancestor path, in that case, the list of keys along the way is going to be sorted sequence for sure. That's a little bit more general version than property number one. And what about property number two? So for property number two, let me write it down. So for property number two, and we want to say just the minimum, the minimum key exists in the root entry. And this one here is more like a consequence of P1 because we know that for any root, uh, leaf to root, path in the tree is going to be sorted and the minimum is always the root so that means the absolute minimum for the tree for the key value should be in the root over here and you can see here the four over here is guaranteed to be the minimum key value and the meaning is the highest priority we're going to see how we can use a heap to really implement a priority queue later as after we have covered the basics about, about the heaps. But let me draw the connection right away. High, highest priority. 
Okay, it will be very important for you to understand this. This will be the minimum key value, meaning that it's the highest priority we want when we want to use the heap to implement the priority queue. All right, so that's uh, number two. And what about priority uh, property number three? Right, property number three, the key values between because it's a binary search uh, binary tree between left subtree and right subtree are not related property number three sounds a little bit uh, unintuitive but it's actually quite important let me just highlight it and then i'm going to talk about it just give you one example let's say you talk about let's say for this particular route this node over here right you can see this is the left subtree over here and let me say and this one in here is a right subtree what's really guaranteed is for this particular subtree over here that's rooted at this five is guaranteed to be the minimum amount all the entries that's actually stored in this particular uh, subtree is guaranteed if you compare five against 15, 16, 25, 14, 9, and also 12, right? You can see 5 is the absolute minimum. Let me just uh, put it out. That one is kind of corresponding to P2. Okay, the 5 over here is the minimum of the tree rooted at this node. And what does it really mean when I say the key values between the left subtree and right subtree are not necessarily related? I want you to take a look at this. You can see the 15 over here is the minimum of the this particular subtree over here because you can see 15 is less than 16 and also less than 25. However, the minimum of the left subtree is not necessarily at the same time the minimum of the right subtree. Right, you can see the 15 over here is actually larger than the 9. So think about in order for the entire tree to be a heap, ultimately, you want to make sure the subtree over here is a heap and the subtree over here is also a heap. But both of them being a heap doesn't really mean you can uh, actually uh, say something about the key value over here against the key value over here. You cannot say that. Right? That's also very important for you to see. And so let me just say this. The 15 over here and also the 9 over here, they are not necessarily related. Not related. Right. So these are the three properties you want to uh, understand very well in order to uh, judge about the uh, properties of the heap. All right. These are all the three properties I just mentioned. You can definitely look at the example on the slide as well, but everything has been covered already. And let's now move on to the second property a binary tree must satisfy in order to be a heap. We just talked about the relational property for the key values. And now let's talk about the so-called structural property. And the structural property, what a relief. It's already something you have learned. Let's take a look. A heap with height h satisfy the complete binary tree property. That means in order for the binary tree to be a heap, Number one, it must satisfy the relational property for the key values. And number two, it must be a complete binary tree. These are the two properties. And we learned about what it means for a binary tree to be complete, right? That's something we learned about before. So I'm just uh, reiterating the facts over here. I'm not going to go over them again. It can refer to the earlier part for the lecture when we talk about the complete binary tree. You can refer uh, to the complete details over there. However, I do want to mention several facts using the example just to mention, uh, just to uh, remind you, okay? Let me just switch to a new page over here. And we talk about the structural property in order for a binary tree to be a heap. And it should be a complete binary tree. Let me just mention about several facts. Fact number one, given that a tree is actually complete, given that the binary tree is complete, let me be careful, because for the general tree, we don't really have the notion of being complete, only for binary tree. Given that the binary tree is actually complete, what about the heights, right? If you think about the heights for the tree over here, the heights is going to be basically log base two 
and the number of nodes. However, you may not just be able to get an integer every time. So you may just want to get the flower of this. Okay, for example, how many nodes do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's what you have, right? So n in this case equal to 13. The log to n is going to be, I think, about 3 point something. And the flower of that is actually going to be 3. That will be the height of the tree. You can see uh, for the maximum depth for the child nodes will be 1, 2, and 3. So that makes sense, right? That's fact number 1. Fact number 2, let me use a different color. And we want to talk about the number of nodes from level 0 to level h minus 1, right? So you can see h is simply going to be this whole range. What about just the nodes from level 0 to level h minus 1? Let me just highlight it. So this part over here. So these are all the nodes from level 0 to level h minus 1, right? And how many are there? Well, you can definitely review about how we can calculate this using the formula for geometrical sequence sum. Number of nodes from levels 0 to h minus 1. You can see in this case, h is actually equal to 3. So we are going from level 0 to level 2. So level 0, level 1, and level 2. And what will be the number, if you remember? Well, it's uh, some formula you should really understand by heart. It should be 2 to the power of h minus 1. In this case, 2 to the power of 3 minus 1, that will be 7. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, fact number 2. What about fact number 3? How many nodes do we actually have in the bottom over here? Well, in that case, because it's not necessarily full binary tree. It's only complete, right? Remember, complete binary tree simply say you want to fill out the nodes at the last level, at the bottom level from the left to right. But it may not be completely filled out, in which case it's not full binary tree. So the number of nodes, let me put it here, the number of nodes at level h, it should be equal to the total number of nodes minus whatever that's at the previous level over here, right? Minus 2 to the power of h minus 1, right? That's what you will calculate. That one, you can definitely uh, plug in the actual number. Well, let's try this. The previous one, we got 7, right? This part over here is 7, which we just calculated, and will be 13. So that means you got 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's easy math for this one. What about the minimum and also maximum for a, a complete binary tree, right? In the case of the minimum, let's see over here. So we talk about the minimum number of nodes of a complete binary tree, and also the maximum number of nodes, right? A very quick re uh, review about our uh, formula de derivation from the earlier part. In the case of the minimum, so that means we got only one node at the bottom level. In that case, we know that it's 2 to the power of h minus 1 for all the previous levels. In that case, it's going to be 2 to the power of h minus 1 and then plus 1, which will be 2 to, two to the power of h, right? That's something we explained uh, explain earlier, but it, uh, it doesn't hurt to brush up. What about the maximum? is going to be all the previous level 2 to the h minus 1 plus what will be the maximum number of nodes at the bottom uh, at the bottom level when it is uh, when it is actually full in that case level 0 we got 2 to the power of 0 level 1 we got 2 to the power of 1 level 3 oh level 2 beg your pardon level 0 level 1 level 2 we got 2 to the power of 2 in that case, level h, we got 2 to the power of h in order to be 4. So that will be plus 2 to the power of h. And if you do the simplification, it's going to be 2 to the power of h plus 1 and then minus 1. Right? Just make sure you also understand about these two numbers. It's so relevant in the case of the heap. So that will be, we're really talking about, given the heap, 
height is actually h. What would be the minimum and maximum number of nodes in a particular heap? Right? So that, this will be the minimum and this will be the maximum. Right? So far we talk about the structure versus the relational property. You can see they are quite different properties, but both of them must be satisfied. Each one of them individually is a necessary condition, but not sufficient condition, meaning that satisfying only the structural property, for example, cannot necessarily tell you that the, uh, the tree is actually a heap because you still need to check the relational property. And similarly, only knowing that the tree satisfies the relational property doesn't necessarily mean you will be a heap because you still have to check the structural property. So that's why we said each individual property, structural and relational, is only a necessary condition, but not sufficient condition. You have to combine both. All right, let's go back to the slides. And these are the facts I just mentioned and you want to make sure you understand them. And also, if you've, in case you forgot about the details, you will be able to derive them from scratch. Right? I want to give you just more example about uh, the heaps. Let's now move on to uh, iPad again. And I got one, two, three, four, five, and six. Six different trees over here. Oh, I can tell you that there's, in some way, they're binary trees for, sh uh, for sure, because each internal has at most two child nodes. So every one of them is a binary tree, that's for sure. But now we want to know whether or not each binary tree is at the same time a heap. In order to be a heap, we want to check for the relational and also the structural property. Relational and also the structural. I would suggest you pause the video and consider every one of them and answer the following question. Number one, is it or is it not a heap? Number two, justify the answer. Already, you can now pause the video. All right, assuming that you pause the video, let's now go over example one by one. Is this a heap? Well, let's ch check one by one. As far as the relational property is concerned, we only consider non-root node. In that case, the only node we have is the root, so we don't need to consider that. So it satisfies the relational property automatically. What about structural property? Well, that simply means you want to have, uh, well, if you check back the definition for a complete binary tree, you will see that a single node tree is also at the same time complete. In that case, we simply just got filled out at a level lemma zero. That's just the, heap, uh, just the root, right? So this one here, check, it is a heap. So this is what you can say the minimum possible, the smallest possible heap. The smallest possible one note heap. That's for example number one. It's worth noting. What about example number two? It's not it's not a one note, right? What about relational property? This is non-root node. The key value should be larger than or equal to the key value for the parents. In that case, relational property check, right? And then what about the complete binary tree? Level zero is filled, uh, filled out. What about level one, the bottom level? In that case, it is not filled out because we are still missing the right child. However, we are filling, filling out from left to right, right? We're starting with the left. So in this case, it would be a heap, right? This is a check, right? I'm just trying to go over with you quickly, but you should really fill in the uh, details if you got any doubts. You can definitely refer back to about relational and structural if you got any doubts. What about this one over here? Apparently, this one here satisfies the structural property, right? It's still a complete binary tree, filling out from left to right at the bottom level. But is it satisfying the relational property? No, because the key value for this non-root node is not larger than or equal to 6, right? Oh, there's something I can definitely mention before. So you can see 6 over here is larger than or equal to 4. So that's okay. But this one here, 4 larger than or equal to 6 is not the case. So that's why it's violating the relational property. So violates the relational property. So it is not a heap, right? So it's not check. What about this one here? Well, this one apparently it's, it is satisfying the relational property. You can see six larger than or equal to four. Right, six larger than or equal to four. 
So that one is good. However, it is violating the structural property because at the bottom level over here, level one, you're not really filling out from left to right. You're missing the left. You're filling out the right directly. So it's violating the structural property, right? So it's uh, violating the structural property. Well, you can think about this part over here is missing, right? It's not, you're not really filling out from left to right. What about example five and six? Five and six, first of all, you know that it's both satisfy the structural property. It's a full binary tree, right? You can see both of them are full binary trees, which implies they are complete. Binary trees, meaning that they actually satisfy the structural property. So what's really left to be checked will be the relational property. Let's do that quickly. So for this node here, we have six larger than or equal to its parent key for check. And for this node here, eight larger than or equal to four, also check. And for this one here, eight larger than or equal to the parent key for also check. And for this one here, six larger than or equal to four, also check, right? Simple checks you have to perform. And given that it satisfies both the structural and also relational properties, so these uh, both of these are heaps for sure, right? Both of them, right? I'll just say check overall, right? So these are about the basics for judging whether or not a binary tree is actually a heap. Just make sure you un understand completely about the relational and also the structural properties. And let's now move on to talking about how we can perform insertion and deletion on a heap.